Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Marquette and this is the fourth video in the beginner's guide to Construct 3. And in this particular video, I want to show you guys how you can create a player character that is functional as a platformer and a camera that will follow the player throughout the level because by default, the camera does not follow player. So we're going to cover all of those things you need to know to just get that player ready to go and start working on your platformer. All right. So in this particular case, I do want to mention right off the bat, I should have said this in the last video, but I'm going to say it in the beginning of this one. Uh, keep in mind that if you're using other sprites other than the ones I'm using, the ones I'm using are very small sprites. And so they're working and you might bring in one of your sprites. Say you use the Kenny's free assets that I linked you to also. If you're using those assets, you'll notice they'll come in as ginormous. Okay, And that's all dependent on the initial size that we created the uh, layout when we created our first scene and the size of the map. Now, right now, the size of the map which we can see over here the layout is 640 by 360 okay so that's pretty small okay and so you can kind of see right here this is what it looks like that box is where the whole layout is now if we want to make a really long platformer right we're going to increase the length of this a lot right so it's going to be a lot longer than 640 you know it might be 4,000 5 who knows like how long it goes out depending on what we need but just keep that in mind but that's how you only change the size of the map if you want to change the initial window you don't have to restart the whole thing again that would be silly you just want to go to in this case the project properties under the layout and you'll click on view and then down here you're going to see the section right here the viewport size the 320 by 180 that was what we set it initially you can change that number or you can change the rendering box to be bigger so yes you can either scale down your sprites um, but if you just want to leave them one to one you don't want to worry about that right um, then you just want to make sure you increase the viewport size for the initial game size and of course increase the size of the entire level to match and you see you can how you can change some of the other things here too like landscape and any of the other things that we were doing before so yeah there's a lot of cool functions here you can even have a default background color splash color yada 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 i'm not really going to get into that um but that's uh that kind of stuff that you can add uh here so we'll click back on layout and uh, let's get started with actually creating the character themselves so creating the character is pretty simple we just double click in the scene we're going to add a sprite right so we'll scroll down here click on sprite click and add him we'll add him above the ground somewhere around here so we'll click like this uh, go to load it up. I already have the thing loaded up, but under the assets, the player folder, and in this case, idle, that's what we're going to start with. We're just going to pick the first frame. We're going to do animations in just a bit, but we'll start off by doing this. We have the character. We zoom up on him. You see how real small he is, right? Of course, if you're using a larger one, you'd see it bigger here, but I can zoom up on him just hitting control on the mouse wheel. All right, cool. But we'll get into this, as I said before, in just a moment. What we want to do first, though, is make sure that our player character actually works, right? So that the collision on the ground is working. Everything's functional before we go too far ahead of ourselves so what we want to do is just add a behavior that's pretty simple right behaviors over here we'll click on behaviors add new behavior and a uh, cool thing about construct is it automatically allows you to uh, add different types of movement behaviors like things that function like turrets or eight directional movement you know or a car movement so in this case we just want platformer and we're going to hit add Okay. Now, all you want to do, of course, from here is just test it out. And in order to test it out to make sure everything's working, we're going to hit the play button right up here, the preview. So we'll hit play. The window in this case, because the screen's small, is pretty small. I'll just expand it out using this. And there you go. Now, if you use the arrow keys, left and right will move you. Now, this guy by default is flying, right? And he jumps like ridiculously high, like way out of the screen. Okay. So you want to be mindful of that, that the default functions are better suited for larger pixel sizes. Keep in mind, once again, I'm going to give you some numbers here and we're going to fix these so you can see that yeah he doesn't look the right way he's not animating and all that other crap but that's what we're about to do and we're going to fix but as i said before the speed and all that other stuff that's all dependent on the size of the sprite the size of your world and kind of how you want to design it if you want them to go flying on purpose we'll then design the map that way but in the beginning these are the numbers you got to tweak so i have them right here you can see these are the numbers that i have set to make this size of a character in this world work good that's so i will reiterate it might not work for yours so you you play with these numbers now we'll talk a little bit about what the numbers mean so that you can change them around yourself but let's take a look at the first one which is max speed of course that's pretty obvious how fast he goes in this case because it's a small pixel it's going way too fast okay so we're going to set it down to 120 slow him down a bit 
system, okay? And then acceleration and deceleration, we're going to leave it. Another cool thing, though, is whenever you select anything over here in behaviors or properties, I should say, uh, not just behaviors, but all properties, look down here. You'll see right here, it even explains to you what the max speed is, right? Saying how that works, right? How many pixels per second and yada, yada, that's going to travel. And so these are all important things to pay attention to. As you click, you'll get different things down there. So what we want to do also is we don't want to go flying out of the world with this jump. So I'm going to reduce this jump down to 350. Okay, gravity, we're going to leave alone. We're actually going to drop down the max fall to 500. Okay, and we're going to do double jump. I find double jump fun. You don't have to add double jump, but you can. Jump sustain, I'm going to leave at zero. But if you want, basically, it means if you hold down the uh, jump button, which is up on the keyboard, if you hold that down, the longer you hold it, the higher you'll go. And this is in how many milliseconds until, you know, whatever it's it's done. You'll even see it said it right there. So you can tweak these numbers for around it, but this part, pay a lot of attention to it. Get it just right, right in the beginning. Don't move on. I've already tested this. That's why I know my numbers are good. But you want to make sure that you get your numbers good because as you just start designing a map and your numbers are off if you just tweak them a little bit like the jump just a little bit less or a little bit more suddenly you break your game right and so you really don't want to start building your map until you really get controls down okay so now if we hit play we'll be able to see that the character now moves in a little bit more realistic speed and he can jump and double jump and i got it set just perfectly so that he can double jump up there he can't jump normally but if you hit the double jump he can get up there so it's pretty fun to do like i said i'm, I'm a big fan of double jump Okay, so there you go. So once again, still no animation, still not looking right. Like if we hit left, he doesn't he doesn't look left and all that stuff. So those are some of the things that we're going to need to work on uh, as uh, next, right? So let's go and hit up animation. So let me scroll down here and we'll talk about the animations. So double click on the sprite. Whoops, and you know I totally forgot to do this. But make sure that you name it. So name it player because this is important. I actually have a lot of things based on the name right throughout the rest of the assignment. So if you do not name your character player, you will actually start typing in player whenever I say to do that. And don't realize that those are connected. It won't work. So make sure you name them player so that it works regardless of what it is. Okay, so we've named him player. You can rename him by, you know, clicking over here, right clicking and hit rename, or you can actually with the object selected name it up here. So you do have a multiple uh, ways to rename things. Okay, so sorry, I totally forgot to say that, but whatever, it's, it's done now. Okay, so now we want to double click on the player object to bring up again this animation editor that we talked about before and this is how the animations work now i have the in this case i have my origin point selected so that's why this is over here but if you had say something else selected you'll see different things um but right here where it says animations let's rename this right so we're going to start with the first one we're going to call it idle okay so this is going to be his idle animation so we'll name it idle and this is important once again that you name things the same way i name them uh, so they work properly okay so we'll have idle here and uh, what we want to do with this animation is add more frames to it. Right now, we only have that first frame. We need the other frame. So in this particular case, the artist has four frames. We're going to right-click, and you can go import frames. You can do it from a strip. So if you actually have like a texture strip um, or, a, or a character sheet or not texture strip, but a, a character sheet or a character strip, you can do it that way. But I have them as individual files or frames, so that's how I'm going to select them. So I'll do from files, and I'll click the rest of them. So two, three, and four, and I'll hit open. So now he should have all of his frames. In order to test an animation you just right click on the animation and go preview and you'll see this little preview now you see that he stopped and he was kind of sliding so there's a couple things that we need to fix and it was a little slow so we need to fix that but you can hit restart and watch it again and yada yada but what we want to do and i already did the settings for you so if you're once again using the same stuff i'm using it's pretty simple what we're going to do is we're going to set the speed here to eight so we're going to speed him up just a little bit and we do want to loop it right so that when he's staying there he's constantly in the idle animation so now we'll try that again we'll hit preview and there you go now the only thing that looks weird of course is that he goes scooting forward for a split second um when he um uh, when he's in the second frame and we'll fix that in a moment i'll talk about that a little bit later but i want to first get all the other animations done because um, it's kind of important that i do that before i fix the frame and you'll find out why in just a moment so let's do run next okay so we'll come in here we'll right click in here and do add animation and we're going to rename it to right to run so we'll type in run Okay, and we'll want to make sure that in this case, okay, um, whoops, I didn't want to do that. So we want to make sure in this case we're going to come down here and add the frames for run. So we'll do import frames from files. So let's see if we can do this quickly. So we'll go and grab run, and there's 10 frames of this one. So we'll go ahead, all 10. You don't want the first frame, it's empty. So let's just select it and hit delete and get rid of it. And there we go. There's our animation. 
Okay, click on run, and the numbers that I have set here is 14 for speed and loop, yes. Otherwise, it looks like he's going real slow, so we don't want to make it go real slow. And this speed also is important, like the speed of how fast you run the animation is also how fast the character moves. So like in the game, if he's not moving all that fast, and there you go, that looks pretty cool. But if he's not moving all that fast in the game and his animation's quick, it looks silly, or vice versa. If he's moving super fast, but his animation's slow, it looks silly. So you want to make sure that your speed is also dependent and matches the speed of the character in game. Okay, and like I said, I've already worked the numbers, so I know this works for mine, but you'll have to tweak them yourselves. All right, so let's add jump. Okay, so I'm going to right-click in here. We're going to another animation, right, rename. We're going to call this one jump. Cool thing about jump is literally just one frame. So all we have to do is come down here, import frames from files. We'll go find the jump, right, so the fall jump and whatever. Here's jump, literally one frame. Hit open, or that's fall, sorry, jump right here. Hit open, delete the original frame. Cool, click on it. We're going to want, we don't want it to loop, so that's okay. I'm going to set the speed to zero now technically that doesn't really matter because it really isn't an animation it's just a frame but whatever i'm going to do it anyways and then we'll do um uh fall so let's do that one next and actually i know i call it falling in the other ones even though i say fall there so i will add the animation i'll call it falling so let's do that there we'll call it falling okay and uh, we'll right click in here once again do the same thing from files okay choose fall hit open delete the first frame all right, once again, click on this. We don't want loop. We'll just leave the speed to zero, and we're good to go. And then your last one, shooting. Now, the shooting animation, we're really not going to get to in a long time. Really, videos 9 and 10 are on shooting. So this one's going to be kind of hanging around for a while, you know, not being used. But uh, just know that uh, we're going to just build all our animations now. So, and I'll just call it shoot, not shooting. Um, we'll just call it shoot. Uh, but this way, you know, we have it done, and we're ready to go to use it in the future. Okay, and like I said, there's a reason why we want all our animations done anyways, and we'll see that in a moment. So let's go in here, right-click, import frames from files. I'm going to choose the shooting one now. In this case, it's called bow for this. We're going to go one through five, hit open. Once again, delete this, and good. So now we have that guy in there. We want the speed to be pretty quick, so 15, and obviously we don't want it to loop. Okay, because we're just going to hit the button. Well, every time we hit the button, he'll shoot as opposed to just constantly shooting. If you have something where he's constantly shooting, then I guess you can set it to loop. But we're not doing that. Okay, so there you go. And obviously, you can always check and preview your animations. Okay, restart. All right, cool. So there we go. So now the important thing is now that we have the animations right, in order to get the character to work properly, there's a couple important things. One is his origin point, which I had selected by default, and two is his collision. Okay, and so those are the things that I'm talking about down here that we got to make sure uh, happens to the character. So let's do collision first. We'll click on collision. You'll see that collision is much larger than the character in a lot of these cases. It's actually as big as the initial frame is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on these two, hold control, and uh, just move them down. So it's kind of like this, you know, collision you can move. Um, you can see it slowly move. Remember, these pixels are so big. If you're somewhere in the middle of a pixel, it won't change the number. You see, I have like I'm moving it up a little bit. Notice how my X and Y values for these aren't changing because it's such a tiny thing. If your image is really big, then yes, a couple of little movements might be uh, changing the numbers. But we're just going to get it so it kind of fits his head. Um, this is good enough, right? We don't need it to be absolutely perfect, just as long as it's really close. And since we're dealing with literally just one pixel, it might be, I mean, if you really want, you can slide them over one pixel. But we can take a look at each of the animations. You'll see in this animation, he leans forward a little bit so we'll probably just leave it that way now it would take us freaking a century to go in here and change all of them at the same time that would be a little silly so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to right click on the uh, collision itself and we're actually going to do apply to whole, uh, whole animation or in this case if you want you can apply to all animations and just manipulate it from the other ones so we'll do apply to all animations and this is why i remember i told you to do all the animations first and now he should for every frame of every animation have the same collision now, we will notice in some cases like this where he's running and his head pops up a little bit, but whatever, if his head goes through a piece of thing, just a little bit like his hair goes through, no big deal. I mean, I guess you can change it, but I'm not a big fan of like constantly changing the collision and the size of the collision for the for the character because then you get all these weird things that happen during animations and swapping in animations and so on. So we're going to keep that. Now, the only one that might want to change in this particular case is our shooting animations. Those are a little odd. Uh, with it with it being so far in front or behind the character, but to be fair, I'll just leave it um, because I don't think it real w really ruin anything uh, in this case. So we'll just set it that way, and everything should be good as far as the collisions go. 
okay now we need to do the origin point so we'll click on origin point you'll notice that the origin point by default is right in the middle of his face now th it, this matters for a couple reasons this is kind of where each the origin point is basically where each frame centers on so it does matter and remember with our idle animation whoops I didn't want to do that but you remember in our idle animation when he gets that little pop so we'll come in here and we'll preview and he has that little pop where he's flying forward that has to do with the fact that the uh, the origin point isn't lined up the same way it is with the other images so what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look. If we look at 0, 2, and 3, notice origin point compared to his body is the same. But if we go to 1, now all of a sudden notice how his body's moved forward and the origin point is over here. So this is all we really have to do to fix this animation is move this over 1. But we also don't want it to be in the middle of the character because there's a couple things that are going to be dependent on the origin point being at the feet of the character, such as the dust, which we're going to do in a moment. Okay, so let's move this uh, over. So on the origin point, we come up here and right-click, and we can do quick assign, and we're going do a quick assign to the bottom which will automatically assign it to the bottom middle which is where we want it and that's awesome for all of them right so you can see right here that it obviously doesn't apply to all of them just that one but yes we can right click on it and then do the same thing we did with the other ones um, apply to all animations and now every frame of every animation will have it in the same spot now we're going to add another origin point later for the bow where the basically they we want the arrow to spawn out from the character but we'll get to that later when we actually get to shooting but just be mindful of that we'll revisit this area then so let's Let's fix that idle animation real quick and it's simple really just want to move this point over a little bit so you can either type in seven up here or i can click forward and remember since it's so small just make sure that that's seven just plus one whatever whatever yours is plus one and now if i hit play or preview right he should well, actually he's looking a little funky there so let's try this okay six uh that's a little odd maybe it's because he's going fast let's check this out Let's actually test them out in level first before we get too much into this. So let me hit play. And, uh, okay, cool. It was just the animation being funky in the editor. As you can see here, it looks nice and clean. Okay, but remember, even though we have the idle animation working and that looks cool, he doesn't swap animations while moving and, of course, while jumping and anything. He's just constantly stuck in idle. Okay, and we don't want that, right? That's a little silly. So that's where we finally get into, in this case, and actually, sorry, I should say, let's create the dust first. I was going to say we're going to get into the event sheet, but we'll do that just right after we create the dust particle. So the dust particle is a particle system that we're going to add that when he lands, and you saw in the preview one here, like when I did this one right here, so when he lands in my old preview, boom, see how the dust kind of comes up where his feet is? That's what we're about to create. So let's do that real fast, and we'll switch back over to this. Okay, so I'm going to add something new to the scene. Double click. We'll type in particles. Okay, and see right there is particles. We'll add it, and we'll actually add it outside the scene. So it needs to be in the scene, uh, as, uh, not the scene, but the layout, but not in the actual view. Okay, that's important because we're going to have it spawn where the character is and not just be randomly shooting in the air or something. So let's find the particle that uh, this person right here is called player dust honestly if you look at it you can make this in 10 seconds it's literally just like a little plus right it just looks like a plus or a cross um that's kind of you know like a dust color or whatever so cool that's the particle in there uh, we're going to rename it right so remember we want to rename things and we're going to rename this one to dust okay so we know what it is i'm going to move it off screen a little bit and there we go. So it's right there, cool off the screen. And now we're going to follow all of the settings that we see over here. Now, another important thing is we do, and I, I jumped a little bit ahead, but we want to make sure it's sent to the top layer. So we're going to right-click, go to Z order, and do top layer. This is so that the dust appears in front of the character, not like behind him. Looks a little weird if it's just coming, like the dust is only coming up behind him. Let's have it pop in front of him so it looks more like it's surrounding him, makes a little more sense. So that's what we're doing with that. And now we're going to match these attributes. And you'll see right here, remember before, as I said before, if you click on this, it'll tell you what it is. So right in this case is basically how many particles are shooting out per second. We're going to reduce it way down to 8. We don't want 50. That's a little silly. So we'll go in here. Spray cone. So this is the direction. Right now it's going out this direction at a 60 degree angle. We're going to type in 180 so it shoots straight up. Okay. We're going to also make it one shot. Okay. So reselect it here. We're going to make this one shot instead of continuous spray. So it only happens once. Right? We don't want to just keep going forever. Okay. The speed of it. want to slow it way down. So let's go in and set that to 10. All right. Size. We want them way smaller. We don't want these things to be spawning giants. So we'll do that. We'll leave opacity at 100. If you want it to be like a little bit opaque, or not opaque, but a little bit transparent, then you can drop that. But we're just going to leave it. And I'm going to do negative 10 for the grow rate. So it shrinks over time instead of gets larger over time. We're going to do 8 in the X randomizer. 
okay and these numbers might not work for like i said once again if your sizes are a little different you might find that you're gonna have to tweak these numbers but this is just as i said before for what i did and i had to tweak the numbers and figure it out until it worked right for me now i'm gonna do negative 10 in gravity and we're also going to set randomized speed randomizer to zero all the rest is going to stay zero and we're not going to have it fade we're actually just going to time out expire meaning that a certain time in this case it shows one second but we're going to change it to a half a second it'll disappear so in a half a second i do 0.5 now in 0.5 seconds it will disappear Okay, so cool. We've got it made, and now we have to do all of the important things to get the player to work. So one last thing we got to add um, before we can actually get into the event sheet and start creating this stuff. So yeah, I mean, I'm not going necessarily in a logical order. You might go, why are we doing this and now jumping here? I'm just trying to save time. If I just kept bouncing back and forth between things, this video would be even longer than it's already going to be. Okay, so let's quickly add a keyboard input to the scene. So if you ever want to do in the event sheet something that is assigned to a keyboard input or a mouse input, which we'll do also a little bit later, you want to add it to the scene. So how do you do that? You double click in here, you come in and we'll just type in keyboard right or key and you'll see right there there's keyboard we'll add keyboard and right here a keyboard has been added so that all it needs to be is in the universe right in the object types we're not going to do anything else with it outside of that now we have everything created we have the animations the dust and the keyboard so we can make this entire player movement section inside of our event sheet so right now we have an empty event sheet what we want to start off by doing is right clicking and i'm going to add a group now a group actually counts as one of your events and remember we only have 50 events so you want to use these sparingly in fact this is the only group if you're trying to save and i'm going to imagine most of you are if you're going to try to save as many events as possible not player group i want to call it player movement sorry i'm like <laughs> typing while i'm thinking here okay so player movement and we'll hit okay and now it makes like almost like i said a group that you can dump everything into as you can see kind of in here all right and that's important because later when we go to do the shooting animation when the player's in the air and they go to shoot they can't because these movements the player movement stuff is going to screw it up so we're going to basically shut off everything under player movement for a moment while he's shooting and then turn it back on when he's done shooting and that's going to help us so basically that's important for the future as far as that's concerned but every other time when you see in mine and go with this one see I have these in, in categories, you know, like categories, like categories, I can't even speak right, categories, right, camera, coins, checkpoints, and so on. Um, we're not going to want to add those because as you can see, they're adding events. So make sure that you just have them all listed. It's not going to be as organized, but it will save you uh, on your um, events. So just be mindful of that. If you have infinite events because you have the full version or you have the uh, unlimited educational, then whatever, just make the events and it's a little bit cleaner. But this will be the only important one. All right, so now let's actually add an event. So click on here. And so you'll see that everything that we've added to the scene already is existing into a uh, event. So what do we want to do to what? In this case, we want the player to do a bunch of things. And so here's the logic behind it, right? So obviously, we want the player to play the right animations when we're doing certain things. We want him to be mirrored when he looks the other direction, right? So if you go left, you want him to turn left. And then when you go right, you want him to go back right. And we want the uh, jump and fall animations to play at the right time. And then also, when he lands on the ground, we want him to go back to idle animation and then have the dust come out. So that's what all of this is. That's basically what it's happening here. So so let's start by the top by choosing player. So what we're saying is we want the player, and this is how the logic of these um, uh, event sheets work, but it basically says if the player is moving, so let's just type in moving up here. We don't have to like look for it. That might take a little bit longer, but if the player is moving, and we're going to add another condition because he's got to be two things, we'll right click on it and hit add and then do another condition. So if the player is moving and in this case the player is on the floor, so we type in floor, Right, so both these two things. So this is where the understanding the logic of the coding comes in. And I can actually mush this down a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. We're going to set the animation to run. So we'll have add action. So what we're going to do is set the player's animation. And we'll do set animation. And we'll type in run in between these quotations. Whoops. We'll do run right there. And from the beginning, we don't need to do a different frame and hit done and awesome. So now if we hit play, you'll see it work, right? So as soon as I start moving, he'll start running. Really cool. But notice how when I stop, he's still running. And that's the problem, right? Once again, logic. we got to think like a programmer would think. We're basically saying once you start running, play run. But there's no place where we basically say when he's not running, don't stop or change it back to idle. And so that's what we're going to need to do is think through all of that. Okay, so this is where your programming logic is going to have to come into play. All right, so in the next case, what we're going to do is we're going to get it so that he does do idle when he stops. So let's do a new event, add event, do player. Okay, we're going to choose player. In this case, we're going to make sure on stopped. So let's start typing in stopped, right? So when player on stopped, okay, and then we're going to add a condition because we want two things, that he stopped 
and he's on the floor just like the other one because we don't want it to be in the air and we're and he stopped or whatever um and you're not pressing any directional uh button so we'll type in this um uh whoops let me try this again so let's click on this we'll do add uh, condition so we want player and we'll type in floor i was typing in floor too early so we'll come in here so when the player is stopped and on the floor have the player set animation play in this case idle so now we'll hit done if i hit play maximize that he runs when i stop he idles runs stop idles cool so we know that's working now let's get him to look the other way when he starts running the other way so let's start by adding another event in this case keyboard because it's important that we know which input we're pushing so we'll do keyboard and we're going to do on a key press not on key code press but key pressed okay we're going to set the key to be in this particular case to be the uh the left arrow Okay, so we're going to click left on our keyboard or the left arrow, and we'll automatically update that to say left arrow and we'll hit OK, and then we'll hit done. So basically, when you press left, what do you want to do? Now, in this case, we also want to have another condition. We're going to add a condition, and this condition is if the player isn't mirrored, because right now he's not mirrored. He's just default. So we'll just have player. So when we press left and the player isn't mirrored, and we're going to type in mirrored here, but you'll notice that you can only pick mirrored. There is no not mirrored. So just click the mirrored anyways. And what you'll do is you'll right click on the is mirrored. So whenever you see an X in here, that means it's inverted. So come in, right click and go invert. And now it means it's not mirrored. So when player is not mirrored and you're pressing left, what do you want to do? Well, of course you want to mirror them. So we'll click on player. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll set mirrored. So we'll just type in mirrored and boom, set mirrored. So now, and you can choose not mirrored, but we'll do that in a moment when we go the other direction. Hit done. So you press left. He isn't mirrored. Mirror him. Now, of course, we don't want them stuck that way, so we're going to do it so that the other way reverts that. So add another one, right? Another keyboard function on key pressed. What do we want to click? Right arrow this time. Hit OK. Done. And we're going to add a new, in this case, once again, condition. Same thing, but now player is uh, mirrored instead of not mirrored, so we'll leave it just mirrored. Cool. So if he's pressing right and he's mirrored, what do we want to do? Well, we want to make him not mirrored. So we'll do player is not mirrored. Start typing in mirrored. Click on that, set it to not mirrored, and we're good to go. Cool. So now if I hit play, maximize here. If I hit left, he goes left, right, goes right, and so on, right? Everything's looking good except for the jump and the dust, right? Jump, fall, and dust. So let's do those, and we'll be done with our cool little animation section, and we can get to the smooth camera follow. All right, so let's do this real quick. So once again, add another event. So we're going to add player. So when player, once again, we want to do, uh, in this case, we're going to do when player is jumping. So we'll start typing jumping. Okay, so it's jumping. You can have another animation if you do double jump. But we're just going to do that. Uh, we're going to make it a little simpler here. So when the player is jumping, we're going to add an action. So what do we want? Well, we want the player to play an animation. So set animation. And in this case, what do we call it? Jump. So we're just going to add jump. And we'll hit done. All right, awesome. So that one's there. Now we can add another one. So another action uh, or event. So we'll do when player is falling. Right, so is falling. We'll click on that. What happens? Well, we play that falling animation. So player, set animation. And remember, I called it falling, even though I had it said fall on the other side. So we'll type in falling is done. And now we should be able to see that work properly. So jump, different animation, fall, right? You see his hand changes as he goes down and his hair moves a little bit different. So we get both of those really just a frame, but it happens so quick. It's hard to notice. So that's good. That's working. And lastly, let's get the dust to work. So once again, and also we want to get it so that when he lands, he goes back to idle because when he lands, he might still be jumping or whatever because it's supposed to be when he's on the ground. So if he's still running, you might get this bug where he's still running in place when you land. So we have to set it so that when the player lands, so in this case on landed, so we'll do on landed. We'll start typing landed here. So when the player lands, what do we want it to do? Well, what we want it to do is play the idle animation. So player, set animation, set it to idle. Come in here, idle, and done, and... We want to spawn the dust. And this is where the origin point is also important because I said before, we want the dust to spawn at his feet. So we're not going to click on dust. Don't be deceived. We actually want to click on system and then go create object. And now we can choose dust. So what we want to create is the dust. So we'll create the dust. Where do you want it? What layer? Well, there's only one layer right now. So it's really irrelevant. I'm just going to leave that. If you have other layers, then you would put that there. But we don't. We can actually pick an XY position in the world, but that's silly. We want it to be on the player. So let's do a little... Uh, right here is we start typing in player so we want to pick player in this case dot x so the player's x position and the player and you guessed it the player's dot y position okay and then hit done so now that should work so let's test it out boom 
Boom. Look at that. Dust every time he lands. Awesome. Boom, boom. All right? So really cool. It just adds that little extra flair if you're trying to polish up your stuff. It's really that polish that kind of helps really sell your game and, and uh, your creativity and your uh, professionalism. All right. So very, very last thing. I know this video is getting extra long, but we really need to put this all in one. Let's do the camera real quick. It's not super hard, but let's go and do that. So now we're going to add the smooth follow camera. So what we want to do is we want to create a small box, right? So we're going to make our own sprite, okay? So let's go back to the layout here. I'm just going to right-click, insert object, or double-click. really doesn't matter. Click on sprite. Boom. Let's make our own object. In this case, I'm just going to take the paint bucket. I'm going to make like a green uh, block whatever okay so we don't need to actually have anything this is just the object that we can visually see that represents the camera so now that we've made this we'll just shut this off and of course we're gonna want to call it camera so so we know what it is so camera all right there we go so we got our camera in the scene now obviously this block is giant so let's shrink it way down right and that will serve as our camera we can put it next to the character like I usually like to put it like right next because it's gonna have to move to where the character is so put it close to him uh, when he starts Okay, so we kind of moved it in there, right? And we want to make it invisible. So the initial visibility, so any object, any sprite, we don't want to see this green box going around. This represents the camera, but we don't want to see it. So we're going to come over here in properties and it says initial, uh, initially visible, no. We're going to say no. So we're going to check that off, and now you won't be able to see it. So now we're going to add a behavior. So come over to behaviors, and what we want it to do is add a behavior, and we're going to add a scroll to behavior. So you can type in scroll, right? So the scroll to. So we're going to choose scroll two, right? And so um, basically at this point, what do we want it to, uh, to, to scroll to? All right, well, obviously we want it to scroll to the player, but we're going to have to do that in the coding. So it has set to, uh, not coding, but the event. So we have it set to scroll to, awesome. One last thing we've got to do is go into the events. Obviously, if you're, if you're not trying to save events, you can make a new group right by right-clicking group so it's a little more organized. But in this case, we're going to save. So I'm not going to do that for the moment. But what we're going to do is we're going to just add, a, a not to the player, but just a new event outside of player movement. It's going to be a system one. Okay, so we're going to choose system, and we're going to type in every tick. So this basically means every tick of the game, every moment that's happening in the game, right? We click. What we want is every tick. What do we want to happen every tick? We want the camera, right, to set itself. So what I'm going to do here is you can kind of see if I actually scroll this over. So... Um, let me scroll this over here Boom. so we can see what's going on because it's kind of like a long set of code right here that we're going to have to add. So this gets just a little bit more complex than what we've done before. But just know that this is basically it's going to smooth follow. So there's like there's a little bit of like, a, you know, a, a catch up speed for the camera it doesn't immediately just perfectly follow him. It's going to be like slowly following him and you'll see what I mean in a moment. All right. So we'll have the camera. And we're going to do set position. Okay, so you see there's things like set angle and stuff is already being set size, set positions, what we want. So what do we want to do? Well, in the X and the Y, we got to do this crazy stuff here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just type in LERP. Okay, so we're going to choose LERP, and you can just type it in. That's fine, too. We're going to do parentheses, right, in this particular case, and we're going to say self, okay, dot X. Okay, so the X position. So self dot X, and we're going to comma, and then we're going to say player, okay, dot x all right and then we're also in this case going to comma and then we're going to do a 0 0.03 okay and that's the value that it kind of slowly works now the other lerp of course is the same thing so we're going to literally copy this so we don't have to do it again that would be silly paste that in there and instead of x we're going to change this to y boom for y and boom for y so that's basically the coding we need to have the smooth camera work we'll just hit done so now you'll see that all there. And now if we hit play, all right, let's maximize it. You see how the camera kind of follows the character. So as I move, right, it's a little bit of a catch up, right? I'm done. And it just slowly kind of catches up with him up or down, left or right. It looks a little bit nicer than a camera that's just like deadlocked on him and moving around. So there you go. We got the character moving. We got that smooth camera follow. Everything's ready to go. So I know the video was kind of long, but hopefully this really helped you guys understand how to create your platformer. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.